بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Some of the ways in which a student of knowledge, a person who seeks knowledge should, some of the manners they should observe with themselves with how they, they themselves uh, seek the knowledge and some of the ways mentioned first and foremost تطهير القلب من كل غش وغل والحسد وسوء معتقد أو خلق ليصلى بذلك لقبول العلم وحفظه so the first way and the first mannerisms that we should observe when trying to seek knowledge with ourselves is that we should try to purify our hearts uh, from every type of deception and cheating and uh, hasid, you know, having uh, enmity or uh, jealousy, wishing to remove the benefit and good of others for, for our own sake. So we should remove those things from our hearts as well as having a incorrect Aqidah or belief that we should purify our belief and also our manners and in this way our hearts will be open to accepting knowledge and memorizing it so this is one of the first things that the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala he mentioned is that by purifying our hearts we're open to knowledge and we purify our, our hearts from things like having envy and having uh, a, a wicked aqida or a, a, a facid aqida, aqida that's great, that's not sound, by purifying the heart from any kind of cheating and, and deception. The second way in which we, uh, in which a student of knowledge should ha the, the manners that they should have with regards to themselves is that they should purify their intention for talab al-ilm and remember that seeking the knowledge is a type of worship husna niyyah fi talab al-ilm bi anna yaqsid bihi wajhullahi ta'ala wa amalu bi wa ahya sunnah wa tanwir qalbihi wa tahleel wa tahliya batanihi so that the second manner that a person should observe when wanting to seek knowledge is that they should purify their intention to seek the knowledge meaning that their intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is an act of ibadah that they're learning to read Arabic they're learning to read and memorize the Quran that they're learning and studying the sunnah in order to practice it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that their intention is to please Allah is seeking the face of Allah the Almighty and that it is also to practice that knowledge and it is to revive the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu because when we gain additional knowledge that means we're able to practice it we're able to preach it and articulate it and show others by example and by speaking and inviting them to it by calling to the sunnah of the Prophet also this purifying of our intention is also a way in which we brighten uh, our hearts and we uh, make our hearts full of light this is a part of the, the, the athar and the effect of knowledge that it should lighten our hearts and that we should have uh, a brightness uh, in our hearts ta'ala, and our iman should increase. Also, this purifying of our intention to seek the knowledge, it also is a way that we purify our insides. قال سفيان الثوري رحمه الله تعالى ما علجت شيء أشد عليه من نيتي. he said سفيان الثوري رحمه الله تعالى one of the تابعين he said that I didn't try to uh, I didn't try to fix something or to uh, to uh, to work on something except that 
that uh, I didn't try to work on something that was more difficult for me than purifying my intention, than my intention. So that shows us, this is how the Salaf were, that they worked on their intention when doing da'wah al-Allah, when seeking the knowledge, when uh, doing righteous deeds, and that it was difficult for even them. So what about us? وَقَالَ أَبُوْ يُوسُفَ الْقَادِي رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَا قُومْ أَرِيدُ بِعَلْمِكُمْ بِعَلْمِكُمْ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَإِنِّي لَمْ أَجْلِسْ مَجْلِسٍ قَدْ أَنْوِي فِيهِ أَنْ أَتْتَوَاضِعْ إِلَّا لَمْ أَقُمْ حَتَّى أعلوهم ولم أجلس مجلس قط أنوي فيه أن أعلوهم إلا لم أكم حتى أفضح أفتضح وعلم عبادة من من العبادات وقرب من القرب أبو يوسف القاضي رحمه الله تعالى he said in a narration he said O people if you want that Allah the Almighty uh, gives you knowledge, then verily I did not sit in a gathering that I purified my intention or made intention to be humble except that I uh, arose from that, that gathering being one of the highest of them, meaning being the, those people who are raised the highest. So he humbled himself and he was raised up. And I never sat in a gathering that I made intention to be the highest amongst them, except that when I uh, arose from that majlis, I was exposed or unmasked. And then he said, and knowledge is worship from the different types of worship. And it is one of the ways in which we draw nearer to Allah from amongst the various ways we draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that shows us the importance of again being humble. That this is a way in which a person will have be able to uh, gain knowledge and Allah will raise them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that he raises those who is given he is given knowledge uh, different levels. So the people who seek knowledge and the people who do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that it's an act of worship, Allah will raise them. They don't need to be popular in such in, in, in uh, circles or put themselves forward. You know, I want to be the great imam. I want to be the sheikh. I want to be the big talib al-ilm in this community. Oh, they, they want uh, someone to, to speak. I'll be the first to put myself forward. No, you don't have to do that. Because if you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will raise you. Allah will push you forward ta'ala, because as Imam uh, as Abu Yusuf al Qadi said, he said, Wal Alm Ibada min ibadat wal qurba min al qurb. He said that knowledge it is worship from the various types of worship and it is a way of coming closer to Allah from the various ways in which we come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the other manners that the student should uh, try to observe with themselves is that mubadr in a tahsil al ilm fi waqt shabab that the person should strive if they are still young to try to seek the knowledge when they're young because there's a big difference for like myself, those of us who try to seek knowledge now when we're becoming older in the, in the middle of our lives compared to those people who memorize the Quran at 10, 15, 12, uh, 20 years old, memorizing the Quran, studying the Sunnah, learning Arabic. Some of us, we begin and we're in our 40s or we begin in our 30s or what have you. And it's much more difficult or even their 50s and 60s, some people. Doesn't mean you cannot gain it, but it's easier and it's better to try to seek knowledge when you're young. So to begin in your youth to seek knowledge, it's easier. Uh, your hearts are more open. You're less busy with your various uh, 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 responsibilities and so forth. And so that's why it's encouraged to seek knowledge when you're young. Another 
way or another manner to observe with oneself in seeking knowledge or thing to implement on oneself is that they should also uh, strive to be uh, content with little food and with simple clothing you know that which is sufficient to clothe them and be patient on uh, a lifestyle which may be uh, a bit difficult and this we want to doesn't mean that we should strive to be poor this is something we have to understand but rather we should be satisfied with what we have so if a person is blessed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them and they can use that wealth to seek the, seek the knowledge then they should be satisfied with that instead of trying to and doesn't mean they have to uh, uh, you know get rid of their wealth or anything like this unless it's in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but rather use their wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it also encourages those who are have a limited means to uh, to uh, be satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has because that is also will help them in seeking their knowledge you don't uh, attain that real high level of seeking the knowledge by uh, or, or gaining knowledge by being lavish in your lifestyle that you've got to spend all your time involving yourself in the dunya I've got to have the nicest iPod I've got to have the newest uh, laptop I've got to always spend my time shopping and this and the latest clothing and this and that, and this style and that style that's not going to help you seek the knowledge we're not making saying that's impermissible no but to be wasteful of your time because and and not satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given you can be an obstacle to attaining knowledge what and Imam Shafi'i said we'll call it Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala la yinala ahad had al ilm bil mal wal izz al nafs fa yuflih walakin min talabihi bedal al nafs wal dayq al aish wal khidmat al ulama al aflah so Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala and who from amongst us doesn't want to be like Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala or Imam Malik or Imam Ahmed or Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'an who from amongst us doesn't want to uh, attain what they attained in this life of of people remembering them and benefiting from their knowledge and may Allah bless them all with Jannatul Firdaus I mean because they strove in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve this deen and they didn't do it by involving themselves and engaging themselves in the dunya so Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala he said that a person does not gain this knowledge by wealth and by honoring themselves and then become successful but rather by seeking the knowledge and striving you know uh, striving with themselves you know uh, sacrificing themselves and having a restricted livelihood and serving the scholars then this person is successful. So that is a very important narration. There's so many benefits Imam Shafi'i uh, gave us, the pearls of the Salaf uh, in this statement. So he said that a person doesn't obtain this knowledge by wealth. So it shows us that you can't buy your way into Talab al-Ilm. You know, wealth can help you. It can make your life easier to where you can buy your books, to where you can travel to seek the knowledge and sit with the scholars and maybe not have to work. That's a ni'mah. That's a great ni'mah that many of us don't have that luxury. But uh, by being lavish with that wealth, that, that can distract you and be an obstacle. What is it to nafs? And putting yourself forward and being arrogant and putting yourself forward. That's not going to, you're not going to gain the knowledge that way. But he said, but rather by seeking the knowledge, the bedal al-juhd, by striving, sacrificing yourself, this is where you're going to get that knowledge. And having a restricted livelihood and serving the ulama, so sitting with the scholars. You can't have a khidmat to ulama if you're not sitting with them, unless maybe you're translating for them in another country or what have you. With now in these times and ages, there's and this time, there's various ways to uh, seek the knowledge and, and, and serve 
uh, the scholars in that in that sense and be a, a, a khidmat for Islam. That this is the way to uh, that a person can gain uh, knowledge. And in relation to this, I want to mention a faida that I've seen personally myself in traveling in some of the maraqis of Sunnah in Yemen. I've seen that some of the brothers that I know that are restricted in their means, I saw the difference that how they strove with their their uh, with their time, they used their time wisely. They didn't have much. I know a particular brother, and I won't mention his name, and he's a very beneficial student of knowledge, and may Allah bless him to be of, from the ulama, from the West in the future. That this particular individual, he sat with Sheikh Mukbil, Allah yarhamahu, and he sat in some of the other maraqis, like in Dar al-Hadith and Shahir, and he's teaching. He teaches the Arabs. This is a brother who came from Canada, who was a non-Muslim at one time, but Allah has raised him where he was teaching the Arabs grammar, Arabic grammar. Even I sat in some of his lessons to improve my grammar, and he was teaching all of us, the Yemenis and and uh, other foreigners, he was teaching them Arabic grammar. Allah raised him, and I can pers- personally bear witness that this individual sacrifices his time. He sacrifices his livelihood. He lived many, he lived when I was there in this very hot uh, place, he lived without an air conditioner. He lived many years in Dar al-Hadith in Damaj without a refrigerator. And sacrificing his time, and due to that sacrifice, sacrificing his wealth, sacrificing, sacrificing his health and his property, and striving with him, himself and his family, Allah has raised him darajat in the ilm. We used to sit together and go over issues together. And his knowledge was clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored him with a whole nother level of knowledge. I benefited from my companion. Why? Because he sacrificed with his time. He sacrificed with his time and his wealth and was satisfied with a simple lifestyle in order to make tafarraq, in order to to continue seeking the knowledge. And that's a great ni'mah. And that brings up the last point I want to mention is that a person who is seeking the knowledge, one of the manners that they should observe with himself is that they should divide their time in the day in the night and divide their time with regards to seeking the knowledge and and doing their other daily activities if you have to work then you work your certain hours and you have rest to certain hours you have time for your family another uh, 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 you you divide your time to have time with your family and you divide your time for talib al-ilm for seeking the knowledge that's the only way you're going to attain knowledge as shaykhana mukbil bin hadi al-wadi'i Allah yarhamahu said and which comes from an athar of the salaf that la yati al-ilm bi rahad jizid that knowledge Knowledge will not be attained by having a comfortable, by, by, by your body being comfortable. comfortable. So you're not going to gain knowledge by eating the best food and just sleeping all the time and having a fat, a fat uh, belly. But rather, you'll gain knowledge by striving, by sacrificing, by fasting, by seeking the knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having ikhlas. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with those characteristics, bless us with al nafi wa rizqin tayyibun wa amalin mutaqabbin and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم